Hey, thanks for listening to the abridged version of The Create Unknown. To unlock full ad-free episodes, sign up at patreon.com slash the create unknown. I don't know how we got into that. Just it's weird. Like a lot of things are weird, but not only are volcanoes and elephants weird. I mean, elephants, what is it? What is an elephant's trunk? What's going on there? Uh, what is I, that? I this episode is brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com slash the create unknown to get a free audiobook and stay tuned for my book recommendation. That's audibletrial.com slash the create unknown. Now on to the show. Welcome to the Create Unknown. I am Kevin Lieber. With me, as always, this time actually through the TV wall, is Matthew Tabor. And that's because we have entered phase three of TCU. Matt, what is phase three of TCU? Phase three of TCU is is a big, complex thing. There's a lot to it. But first of all, first of all, the, the thing that everybody needs to know is that phase three is weekly. That's a massive, massive change. Instead of biweekly, uh, we're going to pop this out every single week, uh, looking at uh, an hour every week. So that's even more content uh, than, than we've had in the past. And we took a little time to figure out how we could make sure that we could do that and uh, – yeah, we got there. So now we're in phase three, which means we should talk about phase one and phase two and what's different. And actually pre-phase one, which is like phase point one, uh, which is how we even even got to that point. Talking to people along the way uh, from Quebble Cop uh, a couple of years ago uh, to King of Random, Grant. We want to talk about uh, everything with Grant in the last couple of years. Uh, and then little bit about Patreon as well. Yeah. So we just launched that Patreon. That's a big part of phase three because mm -hmm. of not only did we want to make more videos, but, but part of the reason for that was just to be more involved with you, with the show, with the community of the create unknown, because that's mm -hmm. really what we're excited about. That's what makes the podcast so yeah. different than Vsauce 2, than making YouTube videos, is it's really about that connection. And, you know, we have some uh, patrons who have already joined. Uh, we did the, the yeah. soft launch, and uh, one of whom is Jeff Davis, who is our first ever Idea Baby Gang member. And he was really interested in the details of what phase three means. So aside from weekly episodes, we'll get more into the nitty gritty of that. And I think that that will help not only give you an understanding of what we're doing with this show, but I really also kind of want to peel back the steps and the layers of doing any project because really where we're at right now with the podcast and where we came from with phase 0 0.1 or even just phase zero, you could say, I think a lot of yeah. people can learn based upon what we've built, you know, so far in the past couple of years of doing this. Mm -hmm. That's right. And everything really started, I, well, it was maybe April of, of 2017, give or take. And I, we, we were talking about something. We had an email come in kind of out of nowhere and it just got us thinking. Uh, and I thought, Hey, we have a lot of conversations with cool people. We talk about things that other people would love to be able to hear. And you and I uh, together discuss things day in and day out that uh, we don't see anywhere else. And so we thought, yeah, we could we could absolutely turn that into uh, not only a show, but a community around it. And again, that's, you know what, two and a half years ago? Yeah. And we had yeah a long process where we eventually met Dave, uh, our producer. He helped us through figuring out how, how a show works on the production side, on the sustainability side, every little bit. 
we had mountains of nuts and bolts on paper that you've always got to figure out so that a project is, you know, legitimate. Um, and, and that was, that all happened before we ever recorded a pilot, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, I think I finished, uh, working with bloody Chrome on the logo a year, like a full year before we ever <laughs> hit the record button on an episode. So that just goes to yeah. show like how many steps, how many bricks you need to lay before mm-hmm. you have a, any sort of foundation. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what kind of phase zero was about. So when you have an idea for yeah. a project, there's so much that goes into, okay, what, what, so how do we make this happen? How do we do it properly? Mm-hmm. What kind of equipment do we need? Um, what is it called? <laughs> like, what's the yeah. show called? Yeah. Uh, it, okay. We have a name for the show. Uh, what is the aesthetic of it? What are what is the branding? Uh, what um, you, are you going to use for your profile picture and your avatar and your logo mm-hmm. and and all of those things before you can ever even start kind of I mean, I don't want to say start making the thing that that is you, how you start making the thing. Right. You ask all those questions and then start to figure out if you're comfortable with the answers that you give. And if you're not, how's it going to be a little bit different? And so you mentioned the logo and all of that stuff. That was a big thing that you started thinking about really early is literally what is this going to look like on the internet? You were thinking on aesthetic and mood and all of that, which it really matters. It it really matters to how something forms. And it takes a while to figure out exactly how that should, how that should be. So that took a long time. Um, uh, deciding what we wanted to talk to people about, what we ourselves wanted to talk about, that's really hard too because there's no sense in having having a podcast that's exactly the same as everybody else. Um, it can't just be two guys hanging out because even the most interesting people hanging out are usually, you know, not that that interesting to other people, you know, (laughs) otherwise they'd be hanging out with like seven people. Um, but yeah, it took a while to figure out exactly what that content should be. And Dave helped us refine that too. It was really helpful to have another person bouncing the ideas off from, uh, absolutely critical. Yeah. Yeah. The collaboration element is key. Uh, talking to people who have been down the road before you is key. I also Mm -hmm. want to kind of say that I don't want this to sound like a laborious slog. I get excited about the different elements of of this process. Like working on a logo, I think is really fun. You know, working on mm-hmm. you know a t shirt design or or whatever it is, whatever step in the process you're at. To me, there's something to be excited about. You know, seeing yeah. the idea come to fruition, and and and, and I think that that's almost the reason to do any of this stuff. Yeah. And I don't think there, I don't think there was a a single part of it that wasn't awesome. That wasn't (laughs) like truly interesting to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, what is, what, what is the hardest kind of most boring thing that's come along? And honestly, it, I think it is what does Kevin Lieber of Vsauce 2 do when he's doing a Kevin Lieber project that's not Vsauce 2? Uh, what are people going to expect in terms of who you are and what you talk about? And how is that going to be similar and how is that going to be different? So that was really tough. And, and somebody who who just pushes record on their desk, which is awesome to to just start something and see how it goes, they don't face that particular problem because they can invent themselves as they go along. But you're in a different scenario where you've got this established thing and, uh, you know, for better or worse, right? So that was something that we had to kind of work through and talk through and figure it out. And even that, which was hard, was was pretty interesting uh, to sort out the details and see it evolve. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that ultimately at the end of the day, the whole point of this podcast and what excites me about podcasts in general is just being able to open up, being able to have real conversations, being able to play with ideas and just being able to connect with people in a way that, that maybe YouTube doesn't allow for. Uh, I mean, I think that Mm -hmm. at a certain level, you know, YouTube 
is the best platform in the world for creating content that people can connect to, quite honestly. Yeah. But at a certain stage, it doesn't have the depth. I don't think that we're trying to create with this podcast, which goes to the Patreon and the different tiers, which goes to mm -hmm. uh, the, the Discord and yeah. just being able to pop in there and talk to you guys about anything, about you know topical things, about yeah. weird images of Macaulay Culkin in his underwear <laughs> eating noodles. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. like it doesn't have to be Home Alone 2020. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have it doesn't have to be uh, such a one way street, which often YouTube yeah. feels like to me. It's definitely the difference between broadcasting, which something like a Vsauce 2 for the most part is. I mean, you certainly uh, have exchanges with people on Twitter and in the comments on YouTube. That's really cool. But if 500,000, 800,000, 5 million people are watching a video, you're only going to be able to have an exchange with so many of them. And what we found, uh, what we found as, as we really planned out the phase three part. We opened the discord. We've got what? 400 people in there now, something like that. You know, we've got a bunch, uh, some, some regular people, some who pop in here and there, uh, some fans who, who range from, you know, high school to, uh, pretty high end creators who have popped in, uh, to talk about their own videos and, and, uh, generally all of this stuff that's a completely different experience than what you can get on YouTube. Or if you're a podcaster, you have even less of it on iTunes or, you know, the Apple podcasts or something like that. So we, we realized how radically different making a community around this is and the different possibilities with it, uh, how it uses our time differently. Uh, what we can give people, you know, it's, it's, you talked about Jeff Davis, he's baby gang member. Number one, he's been there with the create unknown since day one and with Vsauce many, many years before that, you know, I was talking to him last night about how he went to Michael's brain candy live show. How many years ago was that? So yeah, a couple of years ago, yeah, like four, maybe three, three years, years ago, ago maybe. four, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So it, you get these people who, who you've known in a roundabout way for a long time, but now finally we can have a conversation about whatever comes up. That's really, really cool to be able to have that kind of community. Yeah. And not only that, but also, like you said, involving creators as well. Cause one thing I thought was just so cool that happened yesterday in the discord was nerd city pops by a, a bunch of people <laughs> yeah. in the discord don't know nerd city. And yeah. before you know it, he's introducing, you know, fans of the create unknown to his content and he's got new subscribers. It's like, it was that simple yeah. to, you know, pop in, introduce people to your stuff. And now you have new people watching your content, uh, which never like it was unlikely to happen otherwise. Right. And the really funny part about what he did is that one of the people, Kev Lass in the Discord said, I don't know who you are, Nerd City. I've never watched one of your videos. Can you show me one that's going to be representative of who you are? And so Nerd City makes this deal with him uh, <laughs> that, yes, <laughs> I'm watching this play out and I'm like, oh God, I know what's going to happen here. Uh, he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll give you this one video that I think is a good one, but you have to promise to watch it 100% all the way through. So, you know, Kevlas says, okay. And then Nerd City drops this 43 minute monstrosity on him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which other people, uh, you know, Vedette, one of the moderators, uh, she didn't know any of his videos either. So she watched it. She loves it. She subscribes. She goes down a Nerd City rabbit hole for like three hours uh, and messaged me today about him as well. So other people are seeing this happen and it's, it's just really neat to see it come together in that way. And again, that's not something that, uh, that we can do on Spotify. It's not something that Vsauce 2 can do on YouTube. Uh, you can do a little bit of it on Twitter, but it's not nearly as, as powerful as just getting all these people together in the discord, which by the way, the link is in the description. You can pop in the discord for free. You don't need to be 
a, pat- a, a Patreon sub to do it. Uh, you know, there are different roles and things like that with Patreon, different uh, access to different channels. But if you just want to pop in and hang out, do it. You know, we're getting people every day and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And this really is the culmination of years of what you and I have been interested in, yeah. which is our obsession with YouTubers, our obsession with mm-hmm. online creators, and really just our obsession with kind of bringing everybody together. And so mm-hmm. real quick, because we never really answered the question of what was phase one and phase two. So I think phase no. one, you know, to put it succinctly, was figuring out what the podcast was. It was audio mm-hmm. only. Okay. And yep. then I feel like once we got a sense of that, then phase two was let's turn on the camera. Let's show people, let's allow people in on watching the conversation. And that yeah. took a while because of this thing. Uh, b- That's right. Building and designing and working with Jonas Burrs on this thing took two months because <laughs> right. the type of person that I am means that I wanted something that I would be excited about for the set. Quite, quite. Quite honestly, like I didn't want to Mm -hmm. have a set that I thought was boring. I wanted to have a set that I thought was really, really interesting. And I mean, that's why I do anything (laughs) when it comes to creative projects is it's like, unless I'm interested in it, unless I want to see what the thing looks like when it's done, Mm -hmm. then I'm not going to bother my, cause, cause I could do any number of things with my time. So to in order to put my time into something, I got to be excited about seeing it come together. And when it when it came to building a set for the podcast, you know, obviously that ended up being a, a lot more complicated than I think a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> would have bothered with. Yeah. But um, yeah. that's just the type of person that I am, I mm-hmm. guess. I don't really know how to explain it. Yeah, you made the video about uh, – about- the actual mechanism of the of the TV wall, but there's there's actually quite a bit more behind it in terms of who did it and how we know them and how that came to be. James, who was Baby Gang member number two, uh, James asked specifically about that about uh, you know about the uh, or I'm sorry, Kevin, uh, who is a member of the Known, wanted to know the story about. The story behind the monitors, not just the technical side. So that's something that we'll get to a little later as well. Mm -hmm. But you summed up phase one nicely. And as you're describing it, uh, I'm thinking, you know, it took a little while to get to get the rhythm, to get the setup uh, with with us talking, with us talking to a guest. Mm -hmm. Uh, to make sure the tech, like the flow of the editing process and uploading and distribution on a million platforms and all of that worked out. Um, Even things with, we wanted to get some sponsors and that's a difficult process. All these moving parts were kind of nuts and it made a lot of sense to be audio only so we could nail those moving Mm -hmm. parts. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about it and it's like, oh, so phase one was like, the awkward few first dates before you're actually comfortable with somebody. <laughs> and, and, and then phase two which is, is like, which we is decide what? to wait, be wait, in a relationship. I want to, I want to go further into that. What is the awkward first few <laughs> dates? You, you go to like what KFC or Taco Bell? Like what are, what are the stages there? Like fast food first before <laughs> you're willing to splurge on like a hundred dollar dinner. Is that, uh, truly your concept of the first couple dates, fast food. How, how did you get married with that approach to the world? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, so, I, so my, my, my approach is, is embarrassing. I don't know. Yeah. I guess Paula liked me enough that she, uh, you know, dealt with my, my bad taste. No, I mean, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with my approach? You know, you start slow and then you build up, <laughs> towards the uh the fancy dinner at like luigi's where they have <laughs> like the violin <laughs> and the endless breadsticks i guess that's olive garden but still <laughs> olive garden's pretty fancy if you think about it yes uh and i'm i'm thinking too um yeah with with uh mo our first date was at mona Gabi. 
uh, which is a fantastic place in uh, Paris, the not not Paris, France, Paris, Paris, Las Vegas, uh, the resort there. We get to sit on on the strip and look down at all the the weirdos walking by and and have pretty good food. But uh, you never know in those those kind of opening hangout sessions how easy it's going to be to talk to somebody. Uh, even if you know you kind of get along, you don't know how well you get along. And you suss that out over time. And it's like, you know, we knew we knew the guests who were coming in before this podcast. So we knew that we had cool stuff to talk to them about. Uh, we knew that we'd get along with them and love to hear what they wanted or what they had to say. Uh, but you kind of don't know for sure until you do it. And that was phase one. It seemed like things were going well. Then we decide that we're officially in the relationship with the create unknown when we go into phase two and commit to video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to get more into your conception of what the dating <laughs> phases are, because to you, you go all out right away. Like first date is like, hey, I'm a baller. I'm going to take you out to this. I'm going to splurge on this fantastic romantic thing right away. Because to me, you would, no. I would think you'd build up to that. But you, because like, I'm, where do you go from there? Yeah. I'm not a splurgy guy. Mm. I mean, you know me well enough there. I, I would have opted for, I mean, you talk KFC, I would have opted for like the dollar menu. You know, it, look, <laughs> Burger King has 10 nuggets for $1.49 right now. Yeah. Okay. Which, which seems impossible. Like, it's impossible. You tell me what's a better value in all of food than that, right? Uh, so Mona Miga B was not my choice. I was not the one who splurged, but I'm quite happy that it, it turned out that way. What was the, what was the, sorry, now I'm just thinking of like fast, <laughs> fast food economics. What was the article that yeah. determined the, the best bang for your buck was like a McDonald's quarter pounder with cheese or something like that? Was no, that it? So it, no. that's, it was like that. Uh, I think it was Kyle Smith who used to write for the New York post and he still might now. Um, but he just kind of threw out there that the best caloric value in human history was the double cheeseburger at McDonald's for $1. Uh, you know, probably not amazing for you if you eat several of these a day, every single day of your life. But he's saying as Morgan Spurlock $1, figured out, right? <laughs> right. what, wasn't Morgan Spurlock the guy who did a uh, super, yeah, super size, size me. me? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, but he just said, Hey, you can get a whole bunch of calories to su uh, sustain yourself for $1, which in, you know, 2014 or whenever he posited this, uh, $1 took the average person, how many minutes of labor, you know, not many. Uh, it's not like you have to farm all the ingredients for this double cheeseburger. Um, <laughs> but see, so, so you're really, yeah, it's a nod to human progress to on a date. If you take a girl to the dollar menu, it's actually a very high level, sophisticated nod to human <laughs> progress. And I think that's how you should sell it. Yeah. Yeah. Just explain that to, to your date and then never talk to them again because they right. will think that you're <laughs> such a weirdo for explaining that to them <laughs> that they will run, run as fast as they can from ever. Uh, and if they don't run, again, then they're the one. If they don't run. Then, well, at least then <laughs> you move on to phase two. <laughs> then it's time for phase two. Okay, you so know phase two is a good idea. What is phase two? That That's like the less testing the waters and more like, hey, mm -hmm. I, I think we really like each other, right? Yep. 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 We committed to uh, the Create Unknown. We ratcheted stuff up with, with video, which I don't know the, the equivalent there. Maybe it's like moving in together. Because mm. that's pretty serious. It's a pretty serious thing mm -hmm. to go to video after doing audio. It's definitely a next level move, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know about moving in together. Maybe it's like going steady. It's like you're officially committed to one another. Okay. Um, you're not dating around. It's not like a fling anymore at that point. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> no fling stage is fling over. stage is over you're fully dating you have you've exchanged promise rings uh which i don't know if that is that still a thing or is that just like a legend 
that like happened in the 1800s. Promise rings? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think I think they're people still kind of rare at this point. Yeah. Although, yeah, yeah, I mean, y- you could people still give class rings to wear. That's still a thing that a lot of people do. You give your significant other or the person you're dating your class ring. Yes. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that. I haven't heard of that. Then have you ever I don't, have you ever been in a real relationship then if you've never done that? I've never gotten a class ring. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> I don't even have a class ring. Well, how did you get that? Did you have to uh pay for it and and I just didn't do yeah. that? Is that is that what happened? Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm sure you like wadded up the the mailer that the school gave us and like jammed <laughs> it into your Jinkos. Never saw it again. <laughs> <laughs> My Jinkos, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is exactly mm. what happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with the Create Unknown, that was phase two. We're officially dating, mm-hmm. built the set, went to video, and then we got to a point where, okay, we did several episodes of that. What's the next level? Mm-hmm. And that's where we are right now. And th- this is the first episode of that next level. And... Something interesting happened at VidCon this year where you and I were introduced to someone from Patreon. And I yep. have never done anything on Patreon. I have never been involved in that in, in any capacity, literally in no capacity. I knew what it was. I was familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of science EDU YouTubers are on Patreon. Um, Vsauce right. 2 isn't and and so it just wasn't something that I thought about until we met with them and talked about Patreon's abilities to amplify the create unknown and uh, why don't you talk about some of the ways that that's happening and and why it was so exciting and it really is like I'm really mm-hmm. excited about what we're doing now thanks to the the Patreon. Yeah, I had a different conception too about about really kind of what Patreon was. I'd seen it in so many different cases. And I think that's what makes it confusing too, because everybody knows like dozens and dozens of people on Patreon and some uh some do it differently. Uh or, I mean they all do it differently rather. And so it's hard to know why generally people are doing it and how they're using it. You know, some uh, use it as a communication tool. Um, some use it as as a production budget, uh, where they they really you know want that revenue so that they can make X number of videos or podcasts or whatever it is. So like it it totally runs the gamut of a a fun unnecessary thing to like some creators living and dying by it. You know, so I, I didn't quite know. Um, but when we met with Patreon and they explained how, how you can really develop a community more easily around, around a show by using the Patreon tools that really intrigued us. And for example, like the really obvious one is, is what, uh, Patreon's integration with discord, uh, that has been amazing for us because we want, we want creators to, to have a place where they can talk with each other um, and, and only each other. So people aren't asking weird questions or derailing the conversation, you know, kind of a little safe space for creators. Well, Patreon makes it really easy to keep track of those people and give a spot for them. And we, you know, we invited a bunch of, a bunch of creators we knew uh, to pop into the discord, uh, which was, you know, that was really cool. Um, having, yeah, being, yeah, being able to get kind of the like-minded people, the ones who are interested in uh, certain things and not others. That's that's a really powerful way to do it because not everybody is working on a podcast or a channel. You know, they're super fans on something and they want to talk with other super fans. Um, some are really interested in certain elements of a, of a show or a community and others really just want to like send memes and hang out. Mm-hmm. And you need to be able to provide every one of these things for each type of person so that everybody's happy. 
And Patreon's a great, great way to do that. And we're seeing that play out. Yeah. And, and also one element of it that I'm really excited about is also just sending people things. So, you know, as part of the idea baby gang, which is like the, the TCU Illuminati, uh, essentially like the hyperzealous fans, we're going to start sending things to that. I want, I don't want to get like too detailed about what some of the things are, but, um, one of them will be a drawing that I will do, you know, custom by hand for everyone, not like a print. Like I will draw something and mail it to you. Another are these little plastic babies that we're going to send <laughs> along with a custom birth certificate. Just, just doing weird, fun things like that is really mm -hmm. exciting to me. I mean, this is something that I did before Vsauce a million years ago. Oh, yeah. When I had my comedy channel, the the Julius Bloop stuff, when I was doing like my Jerry Bloop videos and, and stuff, I just asked everybody to give me their mailing address one day. I was like, mm -hmm. you know what? I will send you something. Just give me your mailing address and I will send you a sticker and a drawing. So I think I had about 130 or so people respond and it took me a couple of days, but you know, I drew a weird potato cartoon for all 130 people, wrote something weird on it. Like, you know, dog food is human food. If you eat it. Things like that, just <laughs> just like which is technically that's technically true. That is technically you can't true. even shoot that one down. No, and to this day, I get tweets from people taking photos of like, "Hey, look what I just found!" Like in an old drawer or whatever, and it's like the potato <laughs> drawing and and a sticker that I sent them. So that's something I'm really looking. And that was like, how many years ago was that? Ten years ago? Ten? Yeah. Ten or twelve? Yeah, yeah. ten. Yeah, it was like 10 or 11 years ago. So getting back into doing stuff like that, I'm really excited about. And there's another integration that we'll see how it plays out. But Patreon is supposedly getting into the merch fulfillment business. Mm. And that's something that we have had like a little bit of a struggle figuring out how to do well. We have a t-shirt yes. design for the create unknown that we've had for months finished. You know what? And I, I want to interrupt on that because Isaac, uh, Isaac is, is on our creator tier. Isaac's awesome. He's a, a super long time Vsauce fan. How many years ago did, did we first meet him at VidCon? Oh, geez. I don't know. Five. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this was the first VidCon in a long time that, that he couldn't make it. And so uh, anyway, I was just talking to Isaac and he said, can, can you give a hint on this? And so let's get a compromise because obviously you can't just throw up the design on screen right now. That's too much of a step. We can't do that in this episode. Like we technically can, but we can't do that. But can you, are you willing to say the artist who designed it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a good compromise? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, the artist who designed it is named Asuka, O-S-K-A. And you can check out Asuka on Instagram uh, as well as Twitter. And I've been a, a big fan of Asuka's illustrations for years now. And yeah, he was he was amenable to taking the commission. And, and that's something that Nerd City talked about in his mm -hmm. his merch video. So if you're interested in merch, I would definitely check out Nerd City's videos about those. You know, we'll we'll post links yep. to them in the Discord so that it's easy for you to to find them. But in the this the in part 2 of his series on that, he talked about hiring illustrators. And what I found is sometimes they don't respond at all sometimes they're <laughs> really excited sometimes they're really excited to do a commission if they know that you are genuinely a fan of their work and if you aren't too i would say demanding or controlling about allowing them the creative freedom to do their work so in the opening of the create unknown you see that beautiful animation that was created by kidmograph who is 
another one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite <sighs> artists online. Yeah. And that was a similar situation. I just reached out to him. I was like, look, I mean, I, I've, he's, he knows that I'm a fan. <laughs> I've been like favoriting and retweeting his stuff <laughs> literally for years. So he gets it that I like his stuff. And, um, and I just told him like, do a 10 second animation for the show. That's it. Uh, it, it there was, there was no direction other than that, other than, you know, to, to loosely base it off of the logo and the, the artwork that we have for, you know, our cover photo. And gave him free reign, and, and he ended up turning out something that I was I was super happy with. So, I mean, that's a little bit of, of advice yeah. that I would give. If you're going to hire an artist, it's probably a good idea to allow them to create their art, if that makes sense. It absolutely does. And, I mean, you want to hire somebody who you can trust to mix your vision with their vision. And then you see how it worked out and give feedback and make changes and all of that. And, and we had a little bit of feedback on that design, uh, sorting out some of the details, some of the colors, just so it would, you know, get right. Especially when we think about actually printing, you know, you, you started off by saying uh, the merchandise is hard when you really want to do it well. And that's the difference. It's within, 10 minutes. If we hung up on this right now, if we killed this call within 10 minutes, we could have a design ready to go orderable and they would be printed on demand and shipped like within 48 hours. It would probably not be good. Uh, it, it would be cheap in terms of price, uh, which is awesome, but it would be not amazing in terms of quality. And, you know, we're both, we're both people who like really high quality stuff when it comes to, when it comes to the representation of, of art, of people, and especially you, like us, you know, this is merchandise that's going to have your name associated with it. So there's kind of that extra layer of wanting to get it right. And that really narrows the options. It's a different process. Uh, Nerd City's videos really, really showed what that difference is. Uh, and so we've taken our time with it um, really to find out uh, what's going to fit, how it's going to fit with the community too. I think we're in a pretty good place to move forward with that finally. Uh, but like you said, the design itself, like that's, that's almost the easy part. We've had that for some time now since... Uh, yeah, a month or two. It's a question of what do you what do you do with it to get the thing that you really want? Yeah, it reminds me of of the logo where it's like we had this logo for a year yeah. before we started recording the show, and we have this T shirt design for going on. I don't know how many six months now, perhaps uh, before we're ready to actually print it onto a shirt mm -hmm. that we're going to be happy with. So. So that's yeah. just, just another element of phase three. It, it really is yeah. like an amplification in, in so many different ways. And, and the different tiers on Patreon, we thought a lot about because yeah. to me, okay, that platform can be whatever you want it to be. It's almost like YouTube. It's like YouTube is this platform. You can do whatever you want with it. You can be a makeup guru. You can make slime videos. Uh, you can, you know, dissect paradoxes, whatever it is, it's just there and you use the tools as you see fit to be, to build whatever house you want. And once I got an understanding that with Patreon, we could have tiers where there was specific value for different types of people. I mean, one of the things that we've been wanting to do for years is actually literally work with people on their ideas. And yeah. develop them, you know, give them feedback on formats or thumbnails or names or whatever, you know, those kind of developmental tasks are things that you and I both get really into and really excited about and are fascinated yeah. by. And we've talked about for two years now, like how to, what is the mechanism for working with people and reaching out to people and, and, and giving them the, the ability to work with us. And that was another element of 
of this that has finally come together and I'm really happy about. Yeah, and within, tw you know, 12, I was going to say 12, but probably even less. Within eight hours of launch, I was al already talking to somebody who uh, they used to have a podcast. They had to get out of that podcast uh, for professional reasons. They simply had kind of a job conflict with it. Uh, and I talked to uh, talked to them about their next idea, what they want to do next that, that isn't going to be in conflict. Somebody else who uh, I think had a podcast in the past, they and a friend want to reboot you know, an idea they've been bouncing around for a long time. Like literally within hours, we were going over these ideas with people. And I love that. Like that is, that is super exciting. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't even feel like, uh, it doesn't even feel like I any kind of work, you know, even though like technically that's the kind of thing that I do, but because the community is different and because the people in it are different, it feels completely different it's it's like it, it's like doing a project with 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 a friend with somebody you know uh it, honestly it feels the same way as it did as you and i developed the create unknown like this is technically a real project that it would be amazing if it exploded into the biggest thing in the world but first and foremost it was what are these two guys who like talking want to want to put together here and that's a lot of fun yeah. So to sum up and, and, and then we'll, you know, move on to some of the other topics that we want to hit in this episode. I will just say that phase three is all about delivering value for, for anybody who listens to the show, whether you just want to listen to the show, uh, and uh, not be a patron. Well, now you're getting weekly episodes. Uh, and if you want to listen and chat with people in the discord, you can do that. If you want to, you know, work with us directly on your project, now you can do that. If you just want to be in the TCU Illuminati and 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 have us send you weird stuff in the mail, um, you can do that, <laughs> and we will do that. Yeah. So there's oh, just yes, we will do that. <laughs> there's uh, there's just kind of something for everyone uh, at this point. And, and, and that wasn't the case before, before, you know, at, at first we had a podcast that you could listen to, then you had a, a podcast that you could watch. And now it's really this communal sort of project that I think that I'm really excited about. I know that you're really excited about, and I hope that everyone listening can find their place in, in whatever level of excitement that that they're at honestly in a in a really cool way the way i see it too you know i've known you a long time so i see this in a way i see you going back to your roots on it like you mentioned drawing those potato comics and sending them out um you know i still have the t-shirt you made of of uh the potato with with the dynamite you know like blowing things up whatever uh blowing up a, a i remember that era. Cake. yeah that's right the birthday cake yeah uh, i remember that era of uh just wanting to make people happy and get them excited about uh this fun thing and that was a long time ago and the more i think about what we're trying to do here the more i recognize from that era where it's like yeah finally going back to that same thing on a different level, on a higher level, uh, it's, you know, there's more stuff and it's more interesting and exciting and we're reaching lots more people, but at the most basic level, this is you like hunched over, you know, a cardboard box, uh, drawing out potato cartoons, just like, you know, just like 12 years ago. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is awesome. So we're excited to have you along for the journey, mm -hmm. you know, no matter uh, what level of commitment, you know, you're interested in, like do your thing, we're going to do ours and we're going to do a lot more of it. Picture this, you're walking down the sidewalk on your way to the library to check out a cookbook on fried clams. When out of nowhere, a man jumps out of the bushes in front of you and he's got a hook hand and a parrot on his shoulder and he says, how would you like a free audiobook? Well, it's kind of a scary situation, so 
To diffuse the tension, you take out a pack of Mentos and you give him a Mento and he's really happy about that. And then the two of you go skateboarding in the Grand Canyon and you use the Grand Canyon as the world's largest half pipe. And they make a movie about it and it's really, really cool. Well, listen, in this scenario, I am the pirate and you are on your way to the library for that fried clam cookbook. And I'm going to recommend to you to go to audibletrial.com slash the create unknown and get Dune. I am reading this right now. Look, about halfway through. And I want you to read this. They're coming out with a movie next year. Well, they already made one movie. David Lynch made it. But they're making a new one. And the guy who directed Blade Runner 2049 is directing the new Dune. There's a ton of talent in it. It's going to be huge. I hope. I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic that it will be good, but I want you to know all about it. I want you to talk to me in the Discord about this book, uh, Dune. So go to audibletrial.com slash thecreateunknown, listen to Dune, and then we'll both be on the same page with that. So audibletrial.com slash thecreateunknown. Free trial, cancel anytime. Keep the free audiobook. It's a great deal, and you'll support this show, okay? Let's do this. And... Uh, Watch out for pirates. So at this point, mm -hmm. what do you want to get into? Do you want to get into the the reasons for for doing any of this? Yeah, I, I we did. We we talked about that a bit. I mean, there's this theme that runs through everything that we just talked about, which is uh, like we we desperately want to connect with people. Like that's really the difference, and get them at, to at this to point. connect to each other. Also, yeah, like it's yes. it's really like yes, yes, not yes. just about us, but it genuinely is about mm -hmm. creating a. I think you said a safe space. I, I would say more like a dedicated. <laughs> you know, safe space has other connotations. I would say like a dedicated right. space for you know for for people to who are just enthusiastic and curious. Mm -hmm. about being an online creator because I think it's the weirdest thing. I mean, the, I think everything is weird. So so maybe it's not the <laughs> weirdest thing. I mean, volcanoes are pretty weird. I was watching volcano footage the other day and I was just like, I can't believe volcanoes are real. It's just like a mountain <laughs> that explodes with like liquid uh, boiling death. I mean, it's not boiling, but <laughs> for instance, there was this clip where this, this volcano erupted and this gas, it wasn't even lava, it wasn't even magma. It was just the gas that came out of the volcano just spit out at 100 miles per hour, okay, at 800 degrees, Fahrenheit. And, you know, tragically wiped out a lot of people. The the it's uh, this documentary you should check out by uh, Werner Herzog about volcanoes. And he talks about this couple who were I don't know what you call them, not volcano chasers because you don't need to necessarily chase a volcano. It's just kind of there. Uh but, you know, <laughs> volcano observers, I suppose, um who who died in that oh, wow. gas eruption. And I don't know how we got into that. Just it's weird. Like a lot of things are weird, but not only are volcanoes and elephants weird. Cause I mean, elephants, what is it? What is it? Elephants trunk. What's going on there? Uh, what is I, that? I haven't pondered the, bi the big questions of the world, uh, not to any real degree, but yeah, I guess trunk is, <laughs> A trunk is something else. I certainly don't have one. <laughs> so, I mean, you have volcanoes, you have elephants, but then you also have YouTubers. And that's how Yeah, the uh, YouTubers are like humanity's equivalent of the elephant's trunk. I think, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Uh, but what, what you were saying, though, about mixing the the weirdness and the entertainment and the fun with the connection between people is that's that's pretty significant and it does relate in a very general way to 
how you've done things over the last few years. And talking more about 2017, that was a super critical time because, you know, this podcast idea was brewing. You were thinking about uh, uh, doing content a little bit differently on Vsauce too. And we weren't sure how to play any of this. Uh, we didn't we didn't really know how, how to evolve properly uh, or if it could be done like in a timely fashion, in a way that satisfied a current audience and reached a new one, all of this. And then we saw something start to happen, didn't we? We saw somebody else do this. Oh, oh, yeah. Grant, you're talking about. That's right. Yeah, that was the turning point, wasn't it? Was it, was it? Was it the same time? I think it was the same time where. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're not familiar with Grant Thompson, uh, the king of random. Um, I would love to do a little bit of a tribute to him. He uh, he passed away recently in an accident and mm -hmm. a, a lot of love has come out, you know, rightfully so uh, supporting him, supporting his channel, supporting his work. And supporting all of the just the the joy and the the intelligence really that he brought into the world, yeah. but there was one thing missing, and I did a little bit of like a, a a tweet story or tweet storm or whatever, just kind of scraping the surface of this. But it's what he did on YouTube that was so successful and so hard to do which was transitioning himself away from being the focal point of his channel and turning it into a sustainable kind of systemized channel where he didn't have to be the face of it anymore. Mm -hmm. And that was instrumental in that was instrumental in this podcast happening uh, and also the path on Vsauce too, because he had just started to engage in that process in, I want to say about August of 2017, uh, which uh, there's a, a conference that's kind of like VidCon uh, called CVX Live, which is in Utah. It was in Salt Lake City then. Uh, now I think it's in Provo, um, but it's a, it's a cool conference. If you're in that part of the world, check it out because it's super relaxed and uh, just super fun. Uh, it's since it's kind of like a mini VidCon, everybody's a lot more accessible. And I, I was able to talk to Grant at that, at that conference about exactly this. And he was at that place where he thought, uh, I, I need to do something a little bit different with my channel for two reasons. Number one, for the channel's sake, number two, for my sake, because, uh, this is a grind that is unsustainable and he didn't say, you know, life sucks, but when you're working constantly, life sucks. <laughs> well, know? I mean, that's the whole uh, theme of the, the YouTube YouTuber burnout thing is that, I mean, he yeah, was yeah. burnt out. He, he was, mm -hmm. he wanted to keep doing it. He loved making the videos, but mm -hmm. working 16 hours a day, seven days a week on his channel you know, you can only do that for so long. And and he was at right. a crossroads with his channel because he just mm -hmm. just physically couldn't do it anymore. You mm -hmm. can't just burn mm -hmm. burn yourself out like that forever. And he really needed to figure out how to be able to keep the channel going, to keep making great videos, but to also mm -hmm. spend time with his family. I mean, he told me that yeah. that that he would see his wife basically like once a week for like a couple of hours. Yeah. Like it was that bad. He barely even saw his own wife because of, because mm -hmm. of the channel. And what he did was he was the king of random and somehow the king no longer was even on the channel page. You'd go to the channel page and it was two new hosts and he successfully introduced yeah. new hosts to the channel, which guess what? Yeah. At the first, uh, you know, at the, in the beginning was not received well because it never will be, yeah. it never will be received well if you introduce new hosts to, I mean, one of the, the main reason why there's Vsauce and Vsauce 2, um, being, you know, Vsauce is Michael and Vsauce 2 is, is me is that mixing hosts on a channel is tough 
because people mm-hmm. choose favorites. Like, oh, I like this guy, but I don't like this guy. I like the shows that this guy does. I don't like the shows that this guy does. And for us, it was easier for Michael to say, okay, I will just upload to Vsauce from now on. You just upload to Vsauce 2 from now on. And it'll no longer be this mix and match thing that somehow Grant was able to pull himself completely, not completely, but but largely off his own channel and introduce two new hosts. And mm-hmm. uh, it was a gigantic success. It was. And I was just laughing now because you were saying that sometimes somebody likes one person and not the other. And I, I, I remembered so distinctly, I'm like, I've, I've actually seen this happen where somebody came up to you and Michael at VidCon and said to Michael, I like you and said to you, I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was, wait, 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 was it, there was a, there was a, a kid once who Michael, Jake and I were all in a row uh, talking to fans <laughs> and one by one, you know, they were, they were coming up and, and we were shaking their hand and, and saying hello. And one of the fans walks up, you know, it was his time to meet us all. And he, at, at like an inappropriately loud level, <laughs> goes... <laughs> which is the best part. Which is the best part. And, but also did pointing. <laughs> he pointed to Michael and said, I like you. And then pointed to me, but I don't like you. And then pointed to Jake, and I don't like you. And it was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Hey, you got to respect the honesty hey, on that. Yeah. But that's really how it works, though. Yeah. That's totally how it works. And there's nothing weird about it. No. I'm sure there are people who who like either one of you and not the others. And that's just life. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so at the time that I talked uh, to Grant about this, he didn't have the second host yet. Uh, he had just just started working with a guy who would begin to appear in videos with him. And it was almost like this this apprenticeship where I think it was literally a couple weeks, uh, a couple weeks before CBX Live, they'd started working together. And so it was, hey, get, uh, you know, hang around, get a sense of what King of Random is all about, how I do things, what the audience is like, so that this transition is going to be smooth. Um Nobody has really done that, you know, and I would have been really, really impressed if he had just handed off the channel in that way and it had been the same as it had always been. That to me would have been a major win. But at that time, Grant must have had four or five million subscribers. Uh, He does this handoff. Um, he gets more content. You remember us talking about all of a sudden we start to see his videos on Facebook constantly. There are lots of them. Everybody's watching them. They have 18 gazillion likes over there. We're like, all right, this is way more material than used to be out there. People are loving it. And overnight he goes from the 5 million to 10 and 11 million, which it is now. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. If he'd been able to hand off the torch and sustain the channel, major, major win. Instead, he does that and doubles the channel. Absolutely insane. It's it's the best execution of making a sustainable thing on YouTube that has ever happened on that platform. Yeah, so I just wanted to take this time to just record and, and get it get it down, you know, on the internet forever and ever and ever that not only, you know, you can go to the King of Random's channel, you can watch the great videos that Grant did over the years and be amazed by the different experiments and and the lessons that you learn along the way. But you can also go through as someone who's interested perhaps in scaling up their YouTube channel or interested in introducing new hosts or introducing in uh, introducing systems into being able to create more mm-hmm. content, go to the King of Random. Go to that channel and, mm-hmm. and, and see what Grant yeah. did because it's a, a timeless lesson that anybody listening to this, if they're interested in doing what he did, in in getting out of the YouTube burnout, in getting in getting away from 
um, feeling the like you're on this hamster wheel of creating content. Right. And not only that, but be wildly successful at the same time. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's an unbelievable yeah. lesson that that I don't want to get lost. And, and that's really kind of all yeah. I have to say about it. I have more to say about it. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's. I have. I've. I. I. I got. I got to keep going. Okay. Because hey, this is. I want to get something on record too. Okay. Um. It, number one, uh, this uh, this guy Robert Kiyosaki has done financial books. You know, he's famous for this book called Rich Dad Poor Dad. Okay. Where his highly educated actual father didn't accumulate a, a lot of uh, wealth, despite being like superintendent of schools, having a PhD, that kind of thing. Uh, but his friend's dad who was really, you know, uh, like seventh or eighth grade education was this fantastically wealthy dude because he killed it in business. And he was saying, my rich dad uh, had, he understood developing systems. He understood the difference between making a job for yourself and making a business that runs without you. And that was the transition that I saw with Grant where he said, I've got a cool job that I love. And his enthusiasm on it was like unparalleled. Uh, so it's not <laughs> yeah. like he didn't like doing any of it. Which uh, he was like in, in real life. So much, yeah. Like Grant was yeah. that guy in real life. Just as enthusiastic uh, about experiments yeah. and figuring things out and, you know, <laughs> blowing things up. And he would just talk for days <laughs> about that stuff. It's a great example, though, of him realizing that I can only do this job for myself so long. I need to make a system and a business around me so that my vision is being executed even when I'm not on the job working. Mm -hmm. And he nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. But when you're talking about how he legitimately enjoyed this kind of stuff and blowing things up. I'm talking to him about this at, at CVX live because we were doing this panel. Um, I was hosting the panel and it was, uh, Collins key grant, um, uh, Peter, Ho Peter Hollins, uh, was on there. Um, Brooklyn and Bailey. Uh, so this range of people all talking about kind of how they do the business side. And, and he was, Grant was just beginning to talk about these issues, right? Um, so I wanted to, to hang out a bit before that panel, you know, you like to warm up with some talk and all that. He'd just done this meet and greet where it, it ran over a lot longer than it, than it should have, uh, because he stayed until everybody had meted and greeted. So <laughs> yeah, he, he was hanging out and he, he hadn't eaten. So like when finally the last person is gone, he, he runs behind this, this curtain to eat a sandwich. Uh, so I'm talking to him about exactly the issues that we're discussing, about what he's doing with getting a new guy on board, how he's going to be able to pull back from this, but still have the King of Random Channel do what it does, and even more content than before. Mm -hmm. He's going through this, and he sees this kid walk by. And, well, he must have. I didn't because uh, my back was to him. But in the middle of a sentence, he stops the sentence and says, I need to do something. And puts a sandwich down and he walks over to this uh, table that had had a cover on it and pulls out from under the table what looks like a bazooka. All right. It's made of PVC pipe and it looks like a bazooka. And he runs up to the kid and like grabs him, you know, puts his hand and he's like, stand here, stand here right where this this mark is. And then walks like maybe 15 feet away with this bazooka and the the mom you know this kid's about 12 he's there with his mom does he know the kid it's, it's just some random kid no <laughs> this was this was a, a kid and his mom walking through <laughs> cvx live okay um but he you know he looked over at the at the king of random table and you know like oh meet and greets over like it sucks that i missed this one kind of feel mm. uh and i think grant recognized that and intervened here so he takes this bazooka and i think it was filled with uh Oh, no, sorry. He takes a bazooka and he stands there and says, I'm going to shoot you in the face <laughs> uh, to the kid. And I'm trying to put this together because it all happened in about seven seconds. I'm like, what what type of trial am I going to have to testify at in three months? <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, 
he lifts it up and apparently it was filled with liquid nitrogen or something like that. And he was at exactly the right place mm -hmm. so that when he shot this off, it dissipated into this extremely fine mist rather than being something that's going to like freeze your head off and make it like crumble. <laughs> Uh, by the time it, it reached this kid's face, it you could see it visually too. It became a mist, literally like a foot from his face. And all of a sudden he's showered in this, you know, lightly cool kind of thing. And it made the kid's day, you know? It was the coolest thing that I've seen. It was absolutely one of the weirdest things that I've ever seen too. But he just kind of smiles at, at the kid and goes and puts this bazooka thing away and comes back to me and literally picks up the conversation, like, not kidding, on the word that he left off at mid-sentence. And it just keeps talking as if I didn't just witness the craziest thing I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> but <and laughs> yeah, he just you know keeps talking about like, the logistics of, of uh, uh, working with somebody else on a channel. And I'm like, this dude loves, absolutely loves the people who watch his videos and the community that's into King of Random, the community that's in CVX. Uh, that, that kind of thing truly is what is what is behind the phase three. It's behind you making Vsauce videos that are uh, Vsauce two videos that are accessible uh, on a whiteboard. You know, these are uh, awesome math things and paradoxes that everybody can reason out and spend some good time with and have a good time with. Uh, that's the tremendous difference in, in what's going on, uh, where you're bringing content to people uh, so that they can appreciate it, they can do it. Then you know, phase three with the create unknown is getting those people together so that we can interact with them. They can interact with us. They can interact with each other and just kind of expand everything, you know, and it all comes from that little moment where anybody else would have seen this kid walked by. A lot of them would have acknowledged him and nodded and waved or something. And that would have made the kid feel good. Right. There's no question that would have been cool. But instead he stopped the world on a dime to do this crazy, insane thing that only the King of Random could do. And, and the kid will, and, and will remember for the rest the of his day. life. There's no, there's no doubt. I wasn't even a part of it. And you'll remember. I wasn't even a part of, of it. And I'm going to remember it for the rest <laughs> yeah. of my life. Yeah. 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 But I remember telling you about that after the fact. And he was, uh, it was awesome that he spent so much time detailing it because it was the first event I'd been to on my own, not with with uh, any Vsauce related stuff, you know, and that was that was a big deal. And he pretty much said, you know, this new project that you're thinking about, which turned out to be the Create Unknown. Mm -hmm. He's like, just do it. Just just do it. You'll scale it up uh, however you need to. If it doesn't work out, like so what? That gave me a lot of confidence that we could do this. And it got us thinking about how how you could uh, how you could take Vsauce 2 in a direction that would be even better. And as we were thinking about it, we literally got to see the results of him doing it on his own channel. Mm -hmm. So it was absolutely instrumental uh, what Grant did and him taking the time to make sure that that we knew it was possible mm -hmm. and to give us some advice on it back then, absolutely instrumental in pretty much everything that's going on now. Yeah, and it's one thing to to give someone advice or tell them what they should do, and but then you don't do it yourself. I mean, that's such a like a a cliche thing where you you know people do that all the time, where it's like. It's like, uh, what's the, what, what, what is the cliche thing of like a doctor trying to, you know, telling you, you should be healthier. And then they go outside and have a cigarette. It's like, it's like that, that, that kind of advice is a dime a dozen. Yeah. And that's not what Grant, Grant's advice was. That's he lived it and he proved it, uh, spectacularly. And I love that story of him and the kid in the bazooka that just, it's such a microcosm <laughs> It's such a microcosm of Grant. It's so perfect. So, mm -hmm. so it, you know, if 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 anybody takes anything from from our tribute to Grant, it's it's to to if you're unfamiliar with the King of Random, you know, go check it out. Go go watch 
his channel. Go watch mm -hmm. the hundreds of videos that he made because they're great. And he influenced so many people in such a positive way that I think that we could all learn a lot of lessons from, you know, the way that he did things. Yep. And the new videos too, in, in a weird way, his legacy is, is really the content that's still being made <laughs> that he's not even he's in living on. Like that's the coolest part. It, yeah. Is it, it's, it's so hard for anybody in a creative to, to live on, you know, creatively. And if you think about people like Elvis or Michael, uh, Michael Jackson or whatever, you know, they only prints, uh, they recorded however much stuff. And occasionally you uncover something they did. And that's a really big deal. But what they did when they were alive is the extent of their work. And the best that you can do is appreciate it after the fact. Uh, maybe there's a remaster or something that makes it a little different, but you know, they couldn't really create a system for what they did. But in this case, you've got a guy who made a system that will continue to educate or uh, execute his vision indefinitely. Yeah. And so in the weirdest way, like three years from now, Grant's going to still be making videos, even though he's not making the videos. And that's amazing. It's, it's literally the, um, like the phrase, their spirit lives on. It's literally yeah. that. I mean, his spirit lives on through through that channel in such a definitive and 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 literal way. It, it doesn't get any more mm -hmm. clear than that. I don't, I don't think like that. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. phrase is, is 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 something that you hear a lot, and it's like, well, I don't really know if there's a definite. You know, there's nothing you can point to a lot of times to to clearly tangibly see an example of that but you can with the king of random so um i i yep and i'm glad that you put that out there i'm glad that you wanted to talk about that aspect because as you said you know i mean everybody was was completely stunned yes. uh when when the news dropped and yes you know the the people are saying you know in the education community uh as especially um you know, they were heartbroken and uh, telling their stories about about him personally. And, uh, you know, it 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 was uh, great to see all of that pour out. But at the same time, this tremendous achievement that you just brought up and detailed didn't didn't quite make it in to the tributes because, you know, there's other stuff to, to talk about, especially when somebody legitimately is an amazing mm -hmm. person, Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, you really have to focus on that when they mm -hmm. are. And he was, uh, but yeah, it's really important that people realize that he pulled off something absolutely incredible and extremely difficult to pull off with any business at mm -hmm. all, let alone a creative business let alone one that for years has been defined by his persona and his mm -hmm. face as, as that, that whole brand. Mm -hmm. uh, and he transitioned it all, doubled it, kind of without us even noticing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. So I, I'm glad that you brought it up and went through yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I, I hope that, you know, people – just kind of learn from, from his example. And, and, mm -hmm. and like we said earlier, you know, his, his spirit lives on and, and that's the most that you can hope for, mm -hmm. uh, I think. And, mm -hmm. and, and he did it better than anyone. So, so, you know, that's right. A tribute to Grant and all of the good things that he did. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, and it's still, still doing. doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yep. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, I love talking about that story of meeting Grant. Uh, but one of uh, one one of the Patreon members uh, asked in the Discord wanted to know about about how you met Psychic Pebbles. Oh, <laughs> uh, how did you meet? And, and I I didn't know. I didn't know the answer. I couldn't remember how you guys first came together. So I thought, you know, let's talk about that on an episode because I want to. Yeah, hear yeah. Too. Okay, sure, sure. We'll we'll hit that up. We'll continue the conversation over at patreon.com slash the create unknown. If you want to join us where I will talk about Zach, the, what, what do people refer to him as the feculent goblin? 
feculent goblin. So yeah, good. Yeah. So good. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to keep it going. Join us over at, at Patreon. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, that's one that I'm excited to hear. And I've got I think I've got my own questions about about how one gets involved with a feculent goblin. Um, but before we hop over there. <laughs> Yeah, they, that's the standard feculent goblin elision into, right. you know, saying thanks to the people who have it, it really backed us early. Uh, and there's kind of a, a special little place in our hearts for the people who got on right with day one. Uh, Isaac, Isaac Teal, you know, we mentioned him meeting at VidCon. He was a backer. Uh, Jelksis, who has been enthusiastic in the in the Discord. Um, uh, Trev, who you can find on uh, uh, on Twitter at uh, Javatomic, uh, he's uh, just popped in. And the Baby Gang, which I love, I love the Baby Gang. I uh, w- capping it at thirty three. There's only going to be thirty three Baby Gang members in in existence forever, and that's that's a unique honor, in my opinion. I'd want to be in a Baby Gang. <laughs> I I, I want to be in one right now. Um, but yeah, Jeff Davis, who you mentioned long time guy, uh, James, we, he's in Australia and we were talking about the koala in his backyard, which was amazing. <laughs> uh, those guys are awesome. And, uh, uh, Kevin with an E, uh, he's, uh, he was the first member of the known and that was, that's great. We, uh, you know, he asked about the monitors and we'll get to that as well. Um, and then the Seagal Squad, which uh, you can find out about if you just hop in the Discord. And again, we don't want you to think that uh, you have to uh, throw us your credit card to 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 get any of this. Just jump in the Discord. Yeah, we'll have the link in the description. Um, you can talk to all of these people I mentioned. Uh, some some ding dong. Uh, popped on the Patreon the other Jake Roper. Do you know that name? <laughs> I didn't know where you're you know? going with Ding Dong. I'm like, <laughs> who is a ding? Who is this Ding Dong? <laughs> <laughs> there are all sorts of people uh, in the Discord and who are involved with with the Create Unknown, and we just want to get to know everybody. We want everybody to get to know each other. It's honestly exciting to wake up in the morning and grab my phone and like see what happened as I was asleep. It's that it's that interesting and that much fun. So yeah, we're going to continue with some of this stuff and check out the Patreon and hop into the discord, uh, one way or the other. We'll be there. That's right. See you space cowboy. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for listening to the abridged version of the create unknown to keep listening. Sign up at patreon.com slash the create unknown. You'll get to hear the rest of our conversation as well as unlock the ad-free feed, get exclusive content, join the Idea Baby Gang, and more. What is the Idea Baby Gang? Well, you have to go to patreon.com slash thecreateunknown to find out.